They say that when he was born, that the, that the ceremonial fires in Persia went out. Um, they're saying all types of things are happening around the world uh, at that time. These, these are not substantiated at all. Abdul Muttalib, you know, who, who was trying to consolidate, you know, his power, took an oath that, that you know, if I, you know, am in control, you know, of this, you know, I will sacrifice one of my sons. If I have 10 sons, 12, 12 sons, I'll, I'll sacrifice one. Yeah. Sheikh Abdullah, barakallahu feek, welcome back. Um, JazakAllah khair for all the discussion that we've been having uh, about the seal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We still have not even spoken one thing about the Prophet Sallallahu life uh, yet. We, we, you know, obviously the first episode we talked about the, 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 uh, the world of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before he came about. And then we talked a little bit in the second episode about a little bit of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mecca itself, how it came about, Al Kaaba, how it was also built about. Today, I actually want to talk about the year where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or even, I guess, really, sorry, uh, I want to talk about Zamzam and I want to talk about um, the, the discovery of it. Is that okay? Do you want to do that, Sheikh? Uh, yes, sure. Yeah, sure. so let's talk about, I guess, really, uh, we'll, we'll just move from Banu Hashim. Let's talk about the Abdul Muttalib and the discovery of Zamzam, rediscovery of Zamzam. Yes, you so, uh, so what we have to realize now is that um, you know the, the prominence of Hashim and, and coming down, you know, and you know amongst the sons, you know, coming out of Qusay and coming mm -hmm. out of Quraysh, and he passes away, you know, there there in Gaza, you know, his son, um, you know, Sheba, you know, is there in Medina, Yathrib at the time, and and so his other brother, Al Muttalib. Mm -hmm. um, Travels to try to link the family because he knew that there was a son. Yeah. So he so he, he goes to to Yathrib, and finds the son. You know, with a little bit of reluctancy by the mother, she didn't want to really let her son go. But eventually, with this mission in front of him, you know, he he, he takes the son, uh, and then he, which is his nephew. Yeah. And and then he and then he takes him. So when the people see him. They say like, "Who's that boy?" Mm -hmm. So they say, "This is Abdul Muttalib." Yeah. So this is the slave. He looks like he's a slave that Abdul he purchased. Muttalib because yeah. the way he's walking along like a little yeah. slave boy. Yeah. But it's actually his nephew. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, he, uh, they, they now settled. You know, Al Muttalib's in a very important uh, leadership position. Uh, you know, there and uh, eventually uh, Abdul Muttalib, you know, then comes into uh, power. Uh, there, and, and he's, he's, he's a very important leader. Uh, he witnesses so many things in his life. And it is reported that he had a dream. Now, as I, as I mentioned in an earlier uh, session, there was a struggle that went on between Al-Arab and Al-Arab. Mm. And that is the Jurhum people and another tribe that came out of Yemen. The Jurhum, they were defeated at that point. And so they literally covered up the Zamzam. Mm -hmm. They buried it. They buried it, yeah. and then they also buried some of their possessions with it, a yeah. treasure mm -hmm. uh, with it as well. And it is reported that Abdul Muttalib had a dream uh, that he should dig uh, in a particular area uh, to find the Zamzam. It was not running, you know, the way it was before. Mm -hmm. And he did that, and then the Zamzam came. Mm. And so he took control of this, um, which gave him a special authority. Uh, there in the sea. This is running water, and this is the water that is running up until now. It is like yeah. a huge underground ocean, uh, which is feeding into this particular area. Yeah. And in the middle of the desert, this is life itself. So Abdul Muttalib uh, then witnesses uh, uh, so many you know, different things um, within his life. Uh, it is at, at that time when uh, the Ethiopians had taken over the southern part of Arabia, because the, the Christians who were living there in Yemen at the time were being ruled by uh, a Jewish leader, Dhu Nuwas, mm. and he he tortured them and you know and and, and he killed many of them, uh, and these are the people of the trench, yeah, you know which appears in the Quran itself, Surat al Buruj, mm. um, we find the story of the people you know of of of, of the trench, and so. When these Christian people were defeated and the word went to the Byzantine Romans, mm -hmm. they sent to their allies in Al Habasha, the Aksumite Ethiopians, they said, Take revenge. Mm -hmm. So the Ethiopians then, this is the unity of the Christians, yeah. came across 
defeated the Nuas, took over uh, Arabia at the time, the southern Arabia, Yemen, built a, 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 a cathedral, uh, which was defiled by one of the Bedouin Arabs, and eventually, because of this, they decided to destroy the Kaaba itself. Mm, which they considered at the time the representation of the, the Arabs' of the religions. Arabs. So, 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 so this is a major movement that is happening uh, between the south and, and you know of Yemen, mm -hmm. and then Mecca itself, where the army of Ethiopia then goes north, led by Abraha. Mm -hmm. uh, and Abdul Muttalib now, um, you know, he's the leader. Yeah, uh, but he can't do much. The Arabs just hide in you know in the mountains, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sends birds and they destroy uh, uh, the, the 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 elephants, and that is 570 A.D. Amal feel it is the year of the elephants, which is the year that the Prophet Allah himself was actually born. Exactly. Okay, so that was the year, Sheikh, uh, that the Prophet Allah himself was actually born. Now. Sheikh, every single Muslim will ask this question. Everybody talks about these miraculous events that have happened on the night of or the day of that the Prophet himself was actually born. And in subhanAllah, this is really strange uh, because there was so much information about this specifically and there's so much fighting that happens. I just want you to kind of help us out here. How should a Muslim deal with some of these stories? Uh, first of all, tell us a couple of these stories and then tell us how, how we as Muslims are supposed to be dealing with these kinds of stories. It's important for us to separate, you know, fact from fiction in, in a sense and, and superstition. Uh, and so it's, it's when we look at the traditions, we see that nine out of 10 uh, of the different stories about the miraculous births were actually things that are made up uh, mm -hmm. by individuals. Mm -hmm. They say that when he was born, that the, that the ceremonial fires in Persia went out. Um, they're saying all types of things are happening around the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, at that time, these these are not substantiated at all. Mm -hmm. There are some reports that are substantiated. Um, the fact that um, his mother Amina, mm -hmm. you know, that there was like a light that came, mm -hmm. you know, from from out of her womb, mm -hmm. in a sense, and she doesn't know what this is, but but there's some force, you know, that is definitely there. So there are some uh, fairly substantiated, you know, reports. Mm -hmm. The issue is. The important thing is this is the birth of the last messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we don't worship him. And even in the last moments of the prophet's life, he was saying, "Don't do to me as the as what the Christian did to Jesus. Don't do it to me. Don't make my grave a a, a place of worship." Mm -hmm. and, and so this is important that he was the messenger of Allah. Allah chose him for this. But the importance is the messenger and his life and the message. Mm -hmm. So some people look at the messenger and they don't deal with the message. Yeah. Okay. So the messenger is important, but the key issue that's with us today is the message. The point. That's the Quran. And we have the Sira, which is the embodiment, but it's not the physical body of the messenger himself. And this is why Muslims could get caught up in strange practices where somebody comes in town and says, uh, I have a hair of the Prophet mm -hmm. in, in amber. Mm -hmm. And so the people will come to the center and they will worship and touch the hair. How could his hair last over 1400 years and, mm -hmm. you know, this time and, and so many wives tales and, and, and wrong mm -hmm. bits of information. We need to separate, you know, this, this, this fiction yeah. from the reality of Sirah. Okay, wonderful, Sheikh. So then, I guess really before the the birth, then I guess because I think we went a little bit too fast. Let's talk about his parents. Okay, you, uh, last person we talked about that was an important figure is Hashim, uh, Sheba, right? And then Banu Hashim is basically the the sons of of Hashim. And then you spoke specifically about Abdul Muttalib and how he be, uh, sorry Sheba who became Abdul Muttalib, right? Uh, after he was brought back to um, to 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 really to to Mecca by his his uncle. Uh, okay, let's move on from, from there. So how did Abdul Muttalib become, uh, who was Abdul Muttalib first of all to the Prophet and how, how, how did that relationship work out? So Abdul Muttalib um, is his grandfather and he has a number of sons, uh, 12 sons, I believe. And uh, from, you know, amongst the sons is Abdullah. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the connection. So, 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 you know, Abdullah is the father of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Abdul Muttalib is the grandfather. Mm -hmm. So that's the lineage. And Abdul Muttalib, you know, had his son Abdullah marry Amina bin Wahab, you know, who was also from one of the sections of Quraysh, mm -hmm. you know, as well. And so that union uh, gave birth 
to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. what, what, uh, so what do we know uh, about his, his father, Sheikh? His father was a good person in the sense of what an Arab would be at the time. Mm -hmm. He was a business person as well. Uh, there's no real information to say that he was a believer in one God. Mm. He was of the, of the normal Arabian culture and, and society, mm -hmm. and he was a businessman. Mm -hmm. And it was you know, during one of his journeys north again um, that he actually passed away uh, there. And so there's not much contact mm -hmm. uh, between the father and the son, no contact actually, between the father and the son. Um, the son is born, the father is away, uh, and you know, we leave it at that. We don't mm -hmm. go any further uh, in terms of, you know, the mother and the father because the actual revelation had not begun. Yeah. Um, they were upstanding people in Arabian society at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we do know that he was a, a beloved figure to his father, uh, Abdul Muttalib, right? Like, uh, we do f recognize the fact that Abdullah is, was a really important figure to Abdul Muttalib, right? Where we talked about the story of the uh, I don't even know if you, we've mentioned it really, but the story itself of actually the finding of Zamzam himself and the actual, um, the whole idea of, uh, you know, the Diya, right, uh, that just came about from the actual. We just want to talk about the story, Sheikh, and then also the Prophet was mentioning the fact that I'm an Ibn uh, So I don't know if you just want to talk, because that's the only thing that I kind of, we don't have enough information about his father as in terms of like, uh, what he believed and so on. But I just kind of wanted to know why the Prophet was so important to Abdul Muttalib because of his father. We have to recognize the fact that yeah. there was a struggle going on in Mecca between the different tribes. Yeah. And, and, Ab, and, and from Abdul Manaf right down, and, and Abdul Muttalib, you know, who, who, who was trying to consolidate, you know, his power, took an oath that, that you know, if I, you know, am in control, you know, of this, you know, I will sacrifice one of my sons. If mm -hmm. I have 10 sons, 12, 12 sons, I'll, I'll sacrifice one of them. Yeah. So this is one of these oaths that, you know, people will take. Mm -hmm. Arabs were famous for it at the time. And, um, but it turned out that, you know, he consolidated his power and it turned out he had the sons. Mm -hmm. So he had to fulfill the oath. So, so he went to the uh, oath keeping magician, you know, Sahira, you know, person. Soothsayer. You know, soothsayer, yeah. as yeah. they say. You know, and then, okay, draw lots between my sons and see which one, you know, should I sacrifice? Mm. And so literally it became Abdullah. Mm -hmm. And okay, do it again. And it became Abdullah. And then do it again. And, and it continued to go on until 10, 10 times. And then he, he said, okay, give me a break in this. Mm. So he said, okay, after the 10th time, let's see. 10 times it came Abdullah, and then it came sacrifice his sheep. Mm -hmm. And um, so then he was actually prepared to sacrifice his son. That's how serious he was. Yeah. And um, he sacrificed the sheep instead. Mm -hmm. And so he becomes like Ismail alayhi salam in the sense that, you know, he, he was supposed to be sacrificed, but Allah had mercy upon the family, mm -hmm. you know, and, and a sheep was there. There's something that some. Sorry, is it sorry a sheep or is it a camel? Sorry, or, or a camel. It's a camel. Yes. Sorry, yeah, it was a camel. Yes. No, no. So, 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 so it, it was the camel. So this is now, and a camel is really yeah. uh, important in terms of, you know, uh, uh, sacrificing a camel. Some writings point to the fact that Abdullah, amongst the sons, he's carrying some of this charisma of Hashim. Mm. It, 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 it's something in how he looks. It's a body language, it's a charisma type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so he's so he became beloved uh, to, to, to Abdul Muttalib. And then eventually that same charisma went down to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Allah, yes.